So variable RPM on coffee grinders, is it just a marketing gimmick or does it actually make a difference? Now in recent years, this is a feature that many new grinders boast of. So the ET1, the Mythos 2, and the more recently, the DF64, and of course the Time Wars Sculptor series of grinders, all of them have variable RPM. Now the marketing claim is that by being able to adjust the RPM, somehow you can affect the particle size distribution or produce different types of extraction. So you can optimize the grind size for different coffees. But despite this being a feature for so many years, there is no agreement on whether grind speed actually influences extraction of flavors. So for example, Jonathan Gagne, uh, he experimented on his uh, EG1 and what he found was that by increasing the RPM, the distribution was more finer, but if you could compensate it with spacing, so for example, if he grounded coarser to compensate for the higher grind setting, he got exactly the same flavors, the same taste, the same extraction. Now, it might be the case that the impact of RPM is very specific. So it depends on the uh, coffee that you're using, depends on the particular grinder, the particular burr. So in this video, I'm going to focus primarily on the 078S, mainly for espresso. We'll look a little bit at filter, but this is mainly espresso oriented. Now the O78S, as you know, it has a range between 800 and 1400 RPM. So I've tested uh, the effect on extraction time and of course the flavors. I've tasted so much coffee and I feel a bit guilty about wasting such good coffee. But hey, it's for the greater good. So I've tested three different coffees, one dark, one medium and one light roast. And the parameters that I've used are 17 grams of coffee and uh, with a brew ratio of about 1 is to 2.5. So the way I've gone about doing this is I've optimized the coffee for 1100 RPM and then tested it at 800 RPM and at 1400 RPM. And all of this has been done with a cold start. Now, some of you might argue that um, if you use a cold start, there might be a bit of inconsistency in the grind because it takes a while for the grinder to get going. But uh, in my experiment so far, I have not noticed any difference. So the first coffee that I tested was a medium roast and I used a constant flow profile on the Lady Bianca. So in this profile, you start off with a flow rate of about four ml per second, and you then allow the pressure to go up to four bar. Once it's gone up to four bar, switch the flow off. And after about 15 seconds or so, start the flow again at four ml per second. So what you're aiming for is a pressure of about anywhere between eight to nine bar. And you're aiming to adjust the flow rate to about two ml per second. I find that this works really well with medium roasts. Of course, when you reduce the flow, the pressure is going to fall. So at 1100 RPM, for my grinder, the best setting was at uh, 2.6. So I had about 17 grams in, uh, 40 grams out in about 35 seconds or so. At 800 RPM, the machine just choked. I couldn't get anything out of it. But by making the grind a bit more coarser, I was able to replicate the flow profile of the 1100 RPM. So at 800 RPM, the coffee was, was fine. It was somewhat sweeter, but it lacked a bit of clarity and a bit of character. At 1100 RPM, however, the coffee was really enjoyable. It was sweet with a balanced, nuanced acidity and a taste that lingered on your tongue forever. At 1400 RPM, however, I struggled. The extraction was really, really fast. But by grinding finer, I was able to replicate the profile of the 1100 RPM. The extraction looked terrible, to be honest. It didn't look good at all. But the coffee, my God, it was delicious. It was the most complex coffee that I've tasted. It was sweet, it had pleasant acidity, and there was something else to it. There was an additional component. I mean, I can't really put in words. But what I have to say is that at 1400 RPM, the tolerances are really, really small. For example, I went from an okay espresso at about 2.4 to angels crying on my tongue between 2.3 and 2.4, so less than half a notch. So coffee number two, again, was a light roast. For the light roast, I used the blooming espresso profile rather than the constant flow profile because I didn't really enjoy the flavor from the constant flow profile. Again, okay, I used a little Bianca and an Akea Lunar with the press sensor app to monitor the flow rate. 
Just like with medium roast coffee, I found that the extraction time was significantly higher at about 66 seconds at 800 RPM as compared to the 1100 RPM. But by grinding a little bit more coarser, I was able to replicate the flow of 1100 RPM. I actually preferred the flavor at 1100 RPM. I felt it had a greater depth of flavor and more clarity. But unlike the medium roast, I think this difference was really, really subtle. At 1400 RPM, however, there was so much channeling, I could not get anything useful. I tried grinding a bit more finer, but again, that made no difference. So I thought maybe, maybe at higher speeds you get a bit more clumping, so perhaps RDT might help. RDT in fact made things much, much worse. So coffee number three was a dark roast and at 1100 RPM, the best setting was 2.5. And just like the other coffees, the extraction time was highest at 800 RPM. But by grinding coarser, I was able to replicate the flow profile of 1100 RPM. I thought the espresso tasted best at 1100 RPM, but I think if I was asked to do a blind testing, I might not be able to differentiate between the two. At both settings, the espresso tasted sweet, well balanced, and, and it was thoroughly enjoyable. At 1400 RPM, I had to grind really, really fine, so I had to go from 2.5 to 1.8 to replicate the same flow profile. And at this speed, the espresso was, um, had a bit more clarity and it was a bit more acidic. I think if you were one of those people who like darker coffees, then you might not enjoy the coffee at 1400 RPM. You might prefer the lower RPMs. So what do we think is going on? So I used Jonathan Gagne's app to determine whether there was a difference in grind size at different RPMs. Now, this app is a little bit tricky to use because a lot depends on how well you prepare the grinds. So the app isn't really perfect, but what I was able to find is that there was a difference between 800 and 1400 RPM and that this difference was obvious. So you get finer grinds at 800 RPM and coarser grinds at 1400 RPM. However, there seemed to be a little difference between 800 and 1100 RPM. So the average grind size was more or less similar. So what's going on? I mean, we can only speculate. So what I think is that you get more fines at lower grind speeds. So at 800 RPM, you get lots of fines. I know that the general thinking is that higher the grind speed at higher RPMs, you get more fines, but this is not necessarily true. Because you're getting more fines at 800 RPM, this is probably why the extraction time was so much longer. So I thought maybe, maybe using a hot start might make a difference. But again, a hot start did not make any difference at all. At higher speeds, so at 1400 RPM, you probably get less fines, which means less puck integrity, which is why it is so difficult to dial in, and which is probably why I couldn't get anything useful when I was using a blooming espresso profile. For medium roasts, at 1400 RPM, you get the most complex flavors. So I'm mainly an espresso person, but I wondered, do you see the same problem with filter? So I used another app uh, called Coffee Grind to measure the grind size, and there seemed to be a clear difference between 800 RPM and 1400 RPM. So even in the filter range, you get finer grinds at 800 RPM and coarser grinds at 1400 RPM. So final thoughts, changing RPM does make a difference, at least on the 07 test. It is not just a gimmick. For medium roast coffee, the best setting seems to be 1400 RPM. You get a really great tasting, complex espresso. But the extraction might be a little bit difficult and it's a bit difficult to dial in. For light roasts, I was unable to get anything usable at 1400 RPM and it might just be the coffee that I was using. I thought the best tasting espresso was at 1100 RPM. 
For dark roasts, if you prefer a balanced coffee, then I would suggest 800 RPM. But if you like a little bit more acidity, then go for 1400 RPM. Of course, this is a very, very small sample size. Your experiences might be different, so please feel free to add in the comment section what your experience has been. We can only learn from each other. And if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.